Good afternoon, everyone. I'm very honored to be here. I love the little Patuxent Review. I've been in several issues. And I love these launch events because it gives us a chance to be together, especially this weekend in particular. I wanted to tell you all that I was not at the march yesterday, but I wanted to tell you where I was. I was at my school where I do a poetry residency. It's called Carver Center for the Arts and Technology in Towson. Some of you may know it. And they had auditions day yesterday. So I spent the entire day, all day, in a classroom with no cameras, no crowds. And my job was to interview the incoming students who want to be part of the Carver community. They won't all be chosen. But these young, trembling 13-year-olds, and I had to ask them, well, what, what is it that you write? What, what is that you love about writing? And just spending time the whole day with these young people, I just felt so energized by their passion for writing and by their joy in the process of writing. And it just renewed my own feelings. So I wasn't at the march, but I feel I was doing something very <laughs> significant and important. And after all, the written word, we need to encourage our young people because they're, they're a little bit frightened right now. Absolutely. Um, I approach the whole issue of the theme, I should say, of prisons in a little bit different way. But that's what the little Patuxent Review says. You know, you just, you know, you can go outside the box here. So I decided to stay with uh, a person that we all know and remember, Marilyn Monroe. And the prompt that um, actually occasioned this poem was a thing from poets and writers, and they said to, Pick a celebrity, a famous person, and then pick an object that belonged to that person. And write about the person from the point of view of that object. So I did that, and I came up with this poem, which I'll read to you now. It's called, I Am Marilyn Monroe's Lipstick. Kiss, kiss, red in a brassy tube, upright, in her rose-perfumed bungalow next to rows of rainbow-hued pills. Even if I could speak, I'd keep her secrets, the way her hand trembles as she holds me close to the mirror, eyes half shut, mouth an alluring oval. She never bothers to blot my excess. I am an enigma, a glossy magnet catching men, yet part of an arsenal shielding her face from the animal world. Creams, false lashes, pearly blue shadows, goo. Mascara, her lacquered sword. How seamlessly we all play together, guarding our goddess, the portal to her complex inner realm. Stashed inside her rhinestone clutch before a long evening out, I know she will use me over and over, wear me down, leave my raunchy imprint on macho flesh, O oh night of beasts. Alone in the small hours, she washes me off without my crimson luster, just Norma Jean. And I have to tell you something. I, I, don't, I don't know if I should say this, but I'm just going to say it because I, I just got, I got this message from Marilyn a few minutes ago. Um, in, in the journal, the, my poem appears on page 53, and after the last line, without my crimson luster, just Norma Jean, there was actually another last line, which is from another poem I submitted, but it didn't get published here. But the, uh, Marilyn tells me this is not a mistake. This is supposed to be in here, and this is a question that we're all supposed to be asking ourselves in the next four years. Whose life story is a magic Disney resort? That's a line from Marilyn Monroe. Okay, so I'm going to read two other short poems. They're both about Marilyn Monroe. I seem to be on a theme here. I just feel that she was in a kind of prison and that more than 50 years ago, women didn't know how to get out of that prison, and I think we do now. Um, and this poem was also published in the, the, uh, an issue, a previous issue of the Little Patuxent Review. And it actually has to do with two goddesses, um, Marilyn Monroe and Shirley Temple. And they were in real life contemporaries. They were only a few years apart. But I think we all picture them, Shirley as a little girl, the child actress, and of course Marilyn as the voluptuous goddess. So in this uh, poem, they, they get away from it all. The good ship lollipop. Shirley beams from the boat when a pearl Cadillac sails, 
into a parking space sprinkled with stars. Marilyn shimmies from her limo in lavender, LeMay, her voice the scent of tired perfume. Shirley and Marilyn meet on the lollipop, change into thrift shop, shop overalls, take turns reading Hansel and Gretel aloud. Marilyn drained from shimmering in stilettos, Shirley sick of dimples where moonbeams sleep. Both know the lonely places. They comfort one another as if fame could wrap you in cellophane, as if it could crumble like a sucker some kid pops into his mouth biting down. The last poem is brand new. I just wrote it last weekend. I was in a workshop exactly one week ago today with uh, the poet Stephen Dunn in, in uh, Peter Murphy's uh, Winter Getaway, New Jersey. Well, the assignment, the prompt that we gave was to write um, advice. We were to, to uh, write advice from a famous person to us. And since we had a table of postcards, and I happened to, of course, pick one, a picture up of Marilyn Monroe, I decided my poem would be advice from Marilyn to me. But in the writing of the poem, uh, Marilyn, that's not what she wanted. She said, look, I have some more things to say, and I want you to write this down. So this is, um, I don't know how often in her life Marilyn, the true Marilyn, had a chance to speak. So she's going to talk today. Marilyn speaks. I made her up, the hot goddess babe. My career took shape in bed, bath, and blonde. Men used my hourglass body to keep time. Reporters always said I gave up diamonds for Lent. In my jeweled clutch, red lipstick, pink pills. Makeup concealed the real Norma Jean. Tell me, what more did you want to see? My star burned, set fire to the gold lame. Fame killed me, but honey, before I went down, even my pubic hair glowed in the dark. Yeah. <laughs>